Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we are going to be installing Plex Media Server on our home Ubuntu server. So here we are in our Ubuntu desktop and we're currently at Plex's home page. So Plex is designed to be a media share center where you can have folders of your media and Plex will be able to search through, categorize it, and be able to share it to your mobile devices. So here we can see that it is mobile, TV, laptop, and tablet ready. And from there, you are able to have continual playback from one to the other. And a quick shot of all the different apps that it runs on and how it works together with your friends. You can share libraries, you can save things and watch it later, and it's really for good media consumption. It's generally quite simple to use once it is installed, and the installation process isn't that difficult as well. It's just these three steps where we sign up for a Plex account, download the installer, and then start connecting our devices to our Plex account. We can also get a Plex Pass. This just means that you get updates faster. There's some additional swag and the stuff at the bottom that no one really reads. For us to get started, we do need to sign up for an account. We can choose to click the sign up in this particular section, or we can scroll all the way to the very top and click the orange button in the top right to sign up at the top header. There, it's going to ask for us to create a username uh, enter our email address, password, and birth date information. I'm just going to be using one of our uh, extra accounts that we use with all the information in there. Uh, put in the password and then the birth date information. Once all this information is placed, it will send an email to the email address in which we will have to confirm the account to make sure that it is active. So once uh, we just finish up with our birthday, and here I'm just putting in something that may or may not be accurate, we have to agree to the terms of service and then sign up. So now I'm going to go to my Gmail inbox after all that's done and be able to then see the email that has come in and I can now go ahead and click it to confirm my account. So there's a big orange button, click the confirm registration, and away I go. So now here, if you look at the top right, you will notice that I am now signed in and there's a download the center that I want to click to be able to download. Now we are on an Ubuntu computer, so we can go ahead, click the computer, and once again, Ubuntu, there's a 64-bit and a 32-bit. If you've been following along, we are using the 64-bit, but just make note that you want to double check on what architecture your operating system is in. Go ahead, click on 64-bit. We're going to save the file. Uh, here I'm in Firefox, so you'll notice at the top right, give us how much time it is until that particular file is downloaded. And once that file is downloaded, we can install it in the package installation software. So it's quite simple to do. Uh, once this is downloaded, all we have to do is double click on the package itself. So we're just gonna wait for the final seconds for it to finish downloading. And then once we can download it, I'm going to click the download and it will take us to the software installation. So here's Ubuntu Software Center. And here in Ubuntu Software Center, it will load with the package that we want to install. And at the right side, it will have the install button for this Plex media server. So we're gonna go ahead and click it. We wanna make sure that the one that we're installing is the media server. There is also a client which would allow you to connect this computer to a server. We want the server server. That's the one where the files will be stored. Once we click on it, it's gonna ask for us to authenticate. We'll go ahead and authenticate. It will then go about installing the software. And when the software is done, we're going to be uh, pretty much ready to start getting the interface all set up. 
So here we have it that it is installing the status bar is going towards completion on the right side. And then when that is all done, we can then open up a web browser and go to the interface. So I do believe there's just a couple more seconds left. And then after that, we'll be ready for the next step. So it is now installed, so we don't have to do anything else here. So we can go ahead and just close the software center. We're now back at Firefox. There is also an icon that I can click to be able to uh, open the interface, but the interface is basically the same as the web interface. So I'm just going to open up a new tab in the browser and then navigate to our uh, dynamic DNS web address. So if you have missed this step, we do have previous episodes. I will put it in the link below. But I do want to note that Plex by default, the port number is 32400. So with that, you do need to add that into your router port forward. Because we are internal, we don't have to do it yet. But if you do want this accessible outside, then you will have to uh, port forward your router. So with that, it is the port and then we have forward slash web and it'll take us now to our interface. Once we get to our interface, the first thing that's going to pop up is going to be the Plex Terms of Services. Uh, go ahead and read that and just note that at the bottom there is the accept that you do need to accept before we can move on. Once we have clicked the agree button, sorry, it was the agree button, then we can move on to adding medias to our libraries. We do need to click the plus right beside our server name, and that will give us the ability to add libraries. We can add movies, TV shows, music, uh, home videos, and pictures. We're gonna start with pictures. It's going to ask us to name this library. So I'm just gonna keep this simple and just go Mike Photos. We'll go ahead, click next. It's gonna ask what folder. So this is in the Ubuntu system. So most of your folders are going to be found under yourself. So home and then your username, and I'm just adding the pictures folder. Go ahead, click add library. And this will now start importing all the photos so that we can see them in this album. And if I go ahead and click on the photo, then we can see the photo, which is just our logo for tech nerd services. The next thing we can do, we can go back to home. We can click that plus again and then be able to start adding another library. This time we're going to be adding home videos. So once again, I'm just going to give this a simple rename to Mike videos. And then from there, we are going to add another folder to this particular library. So I'm gonna to go to home, Mike, and then the videos as well. And that will work just fine. The other thing, that once we've added this to our library, the other thing that I do want to point out for the home videos is that there is a particular structure of what the files are supposed to be sorted in the folders. And if you choose home video or movies, there is a link. Once I hit next, there is a link that explains what the guide is to naming and organizing those videos so that they appear most easily in Plex. There's some advanced stuff. Most of the time you don't need to worry about this. When you're creating the folders, all you need is the name and the folder locations that you want in these albums. The next thing we wanna be talking about is some of the settings that we want to change in Plex to help set this up. So I'm gonna go into settings and what we're going to be looking for is just some of the different things that help make Plex run a little bit smoother. So most of the things in the general and the dashboard we don't need to worry about because these are the web interface, but you can choose to disable some things like what views you see. But the player part, this is important. You do wanna choose what the quality of your remote quality streaming and your channel quality, just because of the fact that if you are remotely streaming somewhere outside of the internal network, your internet could limit what the upstream is. This means that you might experience lag when you're watching your videos. The next thing that I want to show is if we scroll down a little bit, there is also audio boost. I do find that Plex is a little bit quieter than say YouTube. So I do usually give it a small or a large boost depending on uh, the volume of the media that I have in Plex Media Server. 
I can also give it a friendly name. This is for the server where if other users see it, then they'll be able to identify the name. And then also in the server settings, there's also connect. We want to make sure that we connect our server to our Plex account. So you see me just putting it in and then this is going to start connecting to Plex and it will start advertising for a Plex pass. The important thing is that we need to make sure that it does successfully connect to the server and it will outline what port it is connecting to. Now we see that it has connected successfully. The one thing I do want to point out is that the port is the same port at which we see the web interface, 32400. You may need to adjust this based on your router settings, so you can choose to manually set it if necessary. It's not something that you will always have to do. I generally suggest if it works, then just leave it. So the last thing I want to show is how to log in from Plex TV. So I'll open up a new tab, and what I typed in was Plex.tv. I'm currently already logged in, and once I log in, there's the launch button that will take me to my web interface that is part of Plex.tv. So in the future, I don't even necessarily need to remember my dynamic DNS with Plex. I can just log onto my Plex account. And also, if I choose to share it with other users, I can then uh, have them just create a Plex account and they'll be able to log in to their own Plex account and share my server with them. The final thing that I want to show is the app. So I can go ahead and open a new tab and just in the, the search field or in the address bar, I'm going to Google Plex apps and just want to show that there are many apps that you can then connect your devices to. So first there's some miscellaneous and some Plex companion stuff that isn't too important. There's the Android app that can connect to Chromecast. There's iOS apps and the Plex Home Theater is for a connected media center, Windows Media Center. The Plex web app, which is Plex.tv, and then an app for Windows 8, for Roku, and for Windows Phone. So there's really an app for everything to allow you to connect Plex to any of these particular mobile devices. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Or you can leave a comment down below. Till next time, keep teching on.